It is day seven on the Camino Frances. The first week is going to be done. And what an amazing week. We've been going through different landscapes, started going on the mountains, and now we're approaching uh, the plains. It is the first week where your body is getting used to walking so many kilometers. And if you do, as I did, that a couple of days I walk extra, then even more so. I'm going to be taking a much deserved uh, rest day in Logroño and another one in Burgos. But from now on, in the other Caminos, I learned a few things here and there. And I'd rather just do short stages rather than stop in one city uh, for a zero kilometer day. But before we dig into today's stage, let's go over the Camino de Santiago as a whole. And wait, don't skip it today because I'm going to show you something new. As you guys already know, the Camino de Santiago is about 750 kilometers uh, from St. John Pied de Port all the way to Santiago de Compostela. You can walk an extra 100 kilometers to the end of the world as I did. All the people go to Muxia and the lucky ones do both. Now, as you make your way across Spain westbound, you're going to make your way across some autonomous regions like uh, Navarra, followed by La Rioja, and then the massive Castilla and León. These are the provinces that you're going to come across, starting with uh, Burgos, followed by Palencia, León. Finally, you're going to make it to Galicia, and you're going to walk through Lugo, and then finally A Coruña. These are the major cities where you can stop, rest, resupply. If you want to start or stop your Camino from one of these major cities, if you want to do it in stages, these are the ones that are easily accessible by transportation, whether it's a train, buses, or airplanes. So it will be easy to get in and out if you only have a few limited days. You don't have to spend them just trying to get to the starting point. And those are, of course... St. John Pied de Port in France, Pamplona, Logroño, Burgos, Leon, Ponferrada, the last 100 kilometers, Sarria to Santiago. Today we're going from Torres del Rio to Logroño, 19.8 kilometers, about 20 kilometers. And the first 25% of the way, we're climbing, not too bad. And then from there, we're just going to go down slope all the way to uh, the city. The town that I mentioned to you guys that is at the halfway point is Viana. I would definitely consider staying in this town if you don't want to do like a zero kilometer day, let's say in Logroño, because let's go into it right now. You cannot stay at a municipal albergue two days in a row. They let me do it in this one because I guess it was low season, but I still had to get out of the albergue at eight in the morning and spend the day just wandering the streets with all my gear on until 1 p.m before they would let me go back in. So instead of doing that, I might as well just walk, let's say 10 kilometers to the next town and at least you feel like you're constantly moving. 10 kilometers or less is not gonna do anything to you. It's actually like a rest day. I usually walk about 10 kilometers when I stay in one of these cities. So I will stay in Viana and then just do a short walk. Maybe instead of staying in Torres del Rio, I would have stayed in Los Arcos before and then walk Los Arcos to Viana and then today Viana to Logroño, easy day, and then tomorrow it will be a full regular uh, stage. Vienna is a very charming uh, medieval town. It has a couple of uh, churches. One is completely destroyed in ruins. It has a medieval wall. I mean, it's just one of those towns that uh, now, looking back, I wish I would have stayed there. So yeah, between Torres del Rio and Vienna, no support whatsoever. And between Vienna and Logroño, Mm, nothing either. So bring some water with you, resupply in Vienna, and then move on. Yet another extremely cold night at the albergue, even though I had a sleeping bag, it would get uh, pretty cold in the middle of the night. This was in mid-March. Left the albergue at 6.50 after having a breakfast and I was out walking through the town. My lips were already cracking up throughout the whole week that I have spent here in all these cold temperatures. I'm from Miami, so I'm not really used to like the cold. And uh, <laughs> this is just a rookie mistake. I was looking for lip balm and I couldn't find it anywhere. And it, I was carrying a uh, Vaseline for my feet. So later on, I connected the dots and I started using the Vaseline on my lips and I took care of the problem. When I did the Camino Frances, I wasn't expecting it to be this cold. So it caught me by surprise at the beginning and then it started warming up. By the time I got to Santiago, it was already like the summer at the end of uh, May. Also, let's go over uh, headlamps or torches. I took one of these at the, when I did the Camino and I got rid of it in Logroño because I realized that it's just 
too powerful in the albergue. It bothers people when you turn it on. I switched over to my phone. I just downloaded like a wide picture and I will bring the brightness all the way up. And that was like a softer light. It didn't bother anybody and I didn't have to carry extra weight. Now this headlamps, you can control the brightness and a better feature yet, you can actually turn on a red light that is not as uh, intrusive. So yeah, at seven in the morning, left the Torres del Rio, started climbing. The sun was already about to come out when I made it to the cemetery. This is where I got that shot of the cross with the sunrise behind it. One of those shots that I really like the way it came out. Climbing, working my way up through the hills with the vineyards, you know. You can see the road every now and then, but you're walking on a dirt path. 7.32, I bump into uh, the guy from uh, Chicago, the guy that I met when I took that dip in the, in the pool. The guy's a doctor from Chicago. He's from China. He was telling me his life story of how he escaped China with his family and decided to become a doctor after uh, his mother had a heart uh, problem. So a bunch of uh, letters here on the rocks. They have beer cans, even a condom hanging from a tree. <laughs> and then continue on walking to Ermita Virgen del Pollo from the 16th century at 741. And from here, we're not too far away from uh, the tallest point of the day, the 25%. So a street sign here, 7.4 kilometers to Viana. So gaining ground, making my way up the, the hills. And here's when I made it to uh, the highest point of the day. From this point on, it's just all the way down. So you can see there's a major road that you cross and then you enter uh, more hills, but now you're going down. You see a few ruins here along the way. I call them ruins, but they kind of look like old houses that just crumble down. And uh, just as I made my way there, I saw one nature call. I had to do a uh, number two in the woods. And guys, it's going to happen to you. You're going to spend most of the time out in the countryside, in the middle of nowhere. You know, just come prepare. What I do is I bring just a little bit of a uh, toilet paper. You have no idea this has saved my butt many, many times. Just bring enough for one use. Since you're in uh, another country, you're drinking water from water tap, different kinds of food that you may not be used to it. I also bring a uh, Pepto-Bismol. So great combination. Also follow the no, <laughs> leaving no trace behind when it comes to, uh, you know, disposing. And also bring some uh, hand sanitizer, the ones that you can uh, actually attach to your backpack. I think I had this one like right here oh, so the entire uh, trip. So we're done with that, right? Continue on walking. Eight in the morning, I saw uh, the group of Germans that I had dinner with the night before. And uh, not far from there, made it to uh, the 25% officially <laughs> of the way today. Walking by vineyards, walking by the road. You see a few... Uh, uh, road signs along the way. You see the stone markers with the yellow signs. I, I remember by this uh, bridge, modern day bridge, I got one of those uh, flowers from my ear. Who am I uh, to uh, break with the routine, right? A few more ruins and then I tried my luck once again at the rock stacking and I was successful this time around. It's going to be on and off throughout, but I do get better. Some people don't agree with this. And I kind of shifted my opinions on the Camino del Norte. I, sometimes I felt like just, you know, resetting, resetting it back to zero. But on the Frances, I was doing it every now and then. 8.45 in the morning, got to the 3.8 kilometers to Vienna sign. I was letting my beer grow, something that I don't really do. Why? Because it doesn't connect, so it doesn't really look good on me. But I wanted to show like a... A transition from beginning to end I wanted to show me myself starting out clean and then at the end when I got to Santiago I just wanted to look rough like I went through you know the Camino <laughs> not far from there going over this uh, small hill there's another uh, ruins and as I was making my way down to the main road I had an apple just as a snack and then as I was walking by this uh, vineyards the vine trees that were starting to grow it was the beginning of the season 856 I got a shot here just my feet walking and then rejoin the road for a little bit for a little stretch night in the morning as you can see you're going back and forward trailing uh, or flanking the road 
and you already start to see uh, Vienna all the way out in the distance. And I got there at 9.40 in the morning. I was already at the 50% halfway point of the day. I saw one of those clocks outside a pharmacy and the time was 9.48, 13 degrees Celsius, which is uh, 55 degrees uh, Fahrenheit. If you remember the little tip that I show you, 13 degrees times uh, two equals 26 plus 32 makes it a 58. So 58, 55, you're in the ballpark. So glad when I get to a town and I can see it in 3D, you can tell that it is a major town because the villages that are out in the middle of nowhere, they're usually just flat. But this one is a great one and I got a, some amazing drone shots of this uh, village. As I told you before, I wish I would stay here. I got to La Parroquia de la Asunción de Santa Maria at 9.53 in the morning. This is a famous uh, church. It has the remains of Cesar Borgia bury here got a stamp i also refilled my water bottle at a fountain right across from 1889 and then continue making my way down the town and almost all the way at the end is the ruins of the la iglesia de san pedro now this is a church that the roof completely collapsed but you can still see paintings on the walls it's uh, strategically located on the west flank of the wall enclosure in 1844, as I mentioned before, the roof collapsed during our uh, renovations. I flew the drone from uh, this spot. I was standing on the wall, got some shots of uh, the ruins. I got some shots of the Parroquia de Santa Maria and of the entire uh, city. Should I stay here? But instead, I continue on walking to Logroño. Just as I made my way out at 1030, this is where I say goodbye to the city from this corner. And I continue on walking back into uh, the countryside. Just going under the main road once again, <laughs> I saw those inspirational quotes that I like so much. This is where they have uh, the Buen Camino shell, the graffiti that's there. And then, yeah, continue walking. It was starting to warm up. The, you know, it's very cold early in the morning and around noon, the sun is already uh, baking. Walk past the rest stop. And when I made it to Ermita Virgen de las Cuevas, I decided to stop once again reapplied uh, sunscreen, Vaseline, the <laughs> band-aids, and then I got the old socks and I just hang them from the backpack so that they could uh, somehow dry on my way to uh, Logroño. I was just there for about 20 minutes and I headed back out, got to see the sign 6.8 kilometers to Logroño. You're climbing just a little bit and really exposed to the sun here. So I made it to this patch of woods at the 75% of the way for today, 11.45, almost noon. You get to go walk over like a wooden bridge over the highway. And then finally, you guys, we're done with Navarra and we get to uh, the border with La Rioja. It was noon. You go over a little a wooden bridge that's there. And now you have entered a new stage of the Camino. This could be the last uh, day for you. You could just do St. John Pied de Port to Logroño and just do Navarra and then come back and do La Rioja and on and on and on. So made it past that point, going under the main road once again, more inspirational quotes, and I got to see a sign that says 616 kilometers to Santiago. It's pretty close. And then you enter like a bike path uh, for kind of like the remaining of the day. You're climbing just a little bit. My feet were killing me, my Achilles tendons. For some reason, I guess my shoes were not agreeing with me or I was just breaking them in. My, the shoes that I took are the ones that I was using in LA when I was climbing the mountains there, when I was doing Baldy, when I did the, the Half Dome, when I did the Catalina Trail, but those trips were just short, one day, two day, here and there. Here, I was just walking every single day for a week already. And, uh, you know, they had like a hard shell and it would cause some frictions on my feet. And I guess my Achilles tendon was paying the price. Found a stick, used it. I got some shots of me walking by with a drone and I, man, I was really limping. And in the back of my mind, I thought maybe this would be the end of my Camino. I did not see myself going all the way to Santiago in this condition unless it would uh, improve. Hence the reason why I took a day off in Logroño. But as you guys already know, I made it to Afisterra, so it did get better. I was taking ibuprofen 800, one pill a day, just uh, as the pain started to kick in, I would take it. 
and it will last me all the way to uh, the albergue and once I switch to uh, the flip-flops the pain will just simply go away and it will be the same story on <laughs> the next morning just as you make it to Logroño, just outside the city, there's a lady here, Maria, and her Labrador. She has a stand where she sells Camino uh, merchandise. And uh, you can actually see her dog in Google Street View. If you go down here, here's her stand, and here's uh, her black Labrador. I bump into a man, the German pilgrim that I was walking with for in the first few days of the Camino, and I stopped seeing him. And I also bought this uh, wooden scallop shell that I have, and I took it all the way to Fisterra. I used it also on the Via Francigena and on the three Caminos that I did last year. So I've been using this ever since. So thank you, Maria. <laughs> so made it to uh, Logroño at one in the afternoon. You don't get to walk through like a major polygonal industrial area. So it's just a short walk until you're in the center, the historic center of town. Before we got to that point, there was a water fountain here in a park. The water was extremely cold and a bunch of pilgrims would just jump in there and dip our feet in the water, started walking, enjoying the splash. And then from here all the way to the albergue, I decided to just walk with flip-flops. I didn't want to put the shoes back on. So I crossed Puente de Piedra on flip-flops with Amin. We looked at our guidebooks and decided to just go for the municipal albergue. Now, Logroño, of course, you have plenty of choices, plenty of places to stay. This is a major city. As you can see, you even have a huge stadium over here. You have this uh, mini waterfalls. The old city center has uh, albergues, uh, municipal and private. It also has pensiones, hotels. So it's your choice. If you do want to stay and spend a rest day in a town like this, what I do recommend you do is you stay at a pension. That way you can sleep in the next morning. You don't have to leave the albergue and repack everything and just wander the streets dressed like a pilgrim. You can't even visit museums or anything like that. Got some drone shots of the city and right across the street from the albergue here, Iglesia de Santa Maria de Palacio, I saw white storks uh, nesting at top. I got a stamp from the from this church and uh, settled in into the albergue. You guys know the routine. Took a shower, got my stamp. I hand washed my clothes and I then hang it out to dry it in the patio where they had a fountain. I dipped my feet once again in the fountain and there was a guy there with uh, 12 toes. I, had, I did like a double take because I had never seen that before. He was super cool about it. I got a top bunk bed and I kept asking myself, why do I keep getting top bunk beds when i one of the first ones to get to the albergue? Later on, I found out is that they saved the bottom ones for uh, older people or people that are just injured. Good thing was that I was right next to a window, so I had a, a great view. I was starving, <laughs> as always, hikers hunger. So at 3 p.m., I headed with uh, Amin to uh, La Calle de Laurel. This is a famous street full of restaurants for tapas or, you know, regular menus, full of people, tourists walking down the street. You know, it was a, it was very uh, memorable experience here. I had a bunch of pinchos and I actually came back here for dinner. And then tomorrow I also came back for lunch and dinner. So this was the street that I hit in Logroño, but I hit it uh, hard. Going back to uh, the albergue, 4 p.m., walk by the Logroño's Cathedral impressive one of those uh, highlights of uh, the Camino headed back to the albergue and it was uh, I was surprised to see that the vending machines in Spain they actually sell you alcohol they have beers there so I had a beer with uh, with my new pilgrim friends and then just called it a night around eight o'clock I was super tired and I definitely needed uh, the rest day so guys that was day seven on the Camino Frances with the help of a uh, Google Earth Pro Highly recommend you download all the GPS tracks and follow along with me. Take it on your Camino and enjoy all the information that I'm adding here. And uh, of course, you will never be lost, which is a major thing in the Camino. I saw a couple of people that had to do extra kilometers because they went in the wrong direction and then they had to come back and continue on. Unnecessary. If you're the kind of person that just wants to go with the flow, then by all means do it. This is not for you. But... I really enjoy them. It gives me at least a uh, peace of mind. I know how far I have to walk to the next town, how much ground I have covered, the sites and that are nearby. 
I missed a lot of things on the Camino simply because I didn't know that they were there. So I guess a new stage of the trip starts on the next video.